It is wonderful to be here in your great state. Uh, I'm here to listen. I look forward to hearing from the industry leaders in a little while because I know that you do get better outcomes when you talk to people on the ground. Uh, my government is a government for all Australians and that means doing everything we can to ensure that all parts of Australia can reach their potential. And potential is something that South Australia has in spades. But we know we can do more to make sure that you make this great city of Adelaide and great state of South Australia even greater in the future. And I do thank uh, the TISA for its building a bigger, better South Australia campaign and for facilitating today's conversation. This is the willingness that we need to look ahead and to talk seriously about the better future that is right there at our fingertips and what we need to do together to reach out and seize it. Uh, I'm an optimist and I think that uh, whilst fear is easy to appeal to, uh, hope and optimism are much more important characteristics and that is what drives me and drives our government. Let's consider what you have here in South Australia. You have everything from city beaches to vineyards from Kangaroo Island with the, I think it's Australia's best beach, it's just been named, uh, to the Flinders. And over the decades you've dazzled with the sheer human firepower that you possess in so many fields, whether it's industry, business, science, the arts, sport or politics. Your culinary riches are second to none and South Australian wine inspires devotion across the planet. We're hoping to get it into some markets further in future, in future months. Your mineral wealth is crucial to the economic well-being of the nation. One of South Australia's great, greatest exports, of course, is your people, so much so that the rest of the country has become more or less dependent on South Australians. The media industry is a prime example. As the Tizer's editor, Gemma, has said, if you took all the South Australians out of all the newsrooms in the eastern states, journalism as we know it in this country would collapse. For so many South Australians over the years, the bright lights elsewhere have beckoned. But it's time to brighten the lights at home and build more possibilities and opportunities right here. Since we were elected in May, my government has worked hard to get wages moving again, to boost productivity and solve the skills shortage, to foster equality and to create opportunity, to remove obstacles and use what we have at our disposal to shape the future, to anticipate and tackle all of the challenges it throws at us, but to seize the opportunities that they contain, to build an economy that braces, embraces innovation and productivity repays hard work and rewards initiative, with measures ranging from the National Reconstruction Fund to cheaper childcare, from seizing the opportunities of renewable energy that South Australia has been so far ahead of the rest of the country on for such a long period of time, to creating the 180,000 fee-free TAFE places, to the announcement that we made this morning bringing forward uh, the commitment that we made jointly to upgrade Flinders Hospital, uh, providing that investment, opening beds sooner uh, than we committed to. It is about making a change for the better, a lasting change. And we're working together with state governments, particularly the Malinowskis government, but with business, with unions, with workers and civil society. My government aims to bring people together to look for common interests, not to look for division. Listening before acting. And I often speak about the importance of us standing on our own two feet as a nation and building a future here in Australia. Now, when work begins on the construction of our nuclear submarine fleet, South Australia will be home to the creation of a vital part of our future. You will be at the very heart of the defence of our continent. As I said at the National Press Club yesterday, this will be the single biggest leap in our defence capability in our history, bar none. Now, while it is just one project, albeit a hugely important one, I see it as something more. Of course, the AUKUS agreement isn't just about nuclear submarines. 
It's about our defence capability across so many areas. It's about interoperability. It's about how we take the collective benefit of three nations and produce an outcome that's much more than just one plus one plus one by benefiting from that relationship. And South Australia is front and centre on that. I got asked a question yesterday at the National Press Club uh, about whether this was, uh, you know, why was I talking about industry policy was basically to paraphrase. Well, this is about the defence of the nation, but it's about much more than that. It is about industry policy. It is about science. It is about innovation. It is about using the defence industry and what will happen here as a catalyst to spur private sector investment. Just as the car industry here in South Australia was about more than motor vehicles, it provided a spin-off, a multiplier across a whole range of industries that served as a catalyst for job creation here in South Australia. Our plans are for much more than subs. It's a plan for nothing less than an industry policy that sees South Australia front and centre of advanced manufacturing, of high-tech advancement as well. That's what makes it all add up. A catalyst for more jobs. Higher skilled, higher paid, more desirable jobs. Indeed, jobs that create more jobs. Jobs we're staying home for, jobs that will drive the South Australian economy and attract some of the best and brightest to South Australia, as well as providing a spur uh, for your homegrown talent, some of which are here with us today. Now, I'm confident that South Australia's future is a bright one. I must say my confidence has been boosted uh, by the students who are here in the teen parliament and the engagement that I've had here in South Australia over a long period of time. You have such incredible natural advantages. With the right leadership, which I'm confident here in South Australia you certainly have in the Malinowskis government, uh, you uh, can be uh, such a driver of our national economy and national success. We need to get beyond the short term. Uh, sorry, Gemma, to say this in front of an editor of a, a newspaper. We need to get beyond the 24-hour media cycle in the way that we think, uh, because uh, if we don't do that, we won't be successful. So a vision of an inclusive nation, a nation that's growing and expansive, a nation that does have industry policy at its core, a nation that trains Australians for those jobs of the future, a nation that takes advantage of the fact that to our north is the fastest growing region of the world in human history and the opportunities that presents in areas like becoming a renewable energy superpower, in areas like green hydrogen where South Australia will be critical as well as in the defence industry. So I'm very confident uh, that I will be able to work so closely on an ongoing basis with, with your Premier, uh, but with your private sector as well and with uh, the newspaper are driving us and holding us to account in making sure uh, that we do uh, reach for the stars and make sure that we take the country with us on that journey. Uh, my government uh, has, uh, I think, more South Australians in senior positions, including half of my leadership team, of course, in Penny Wong and Don Farrell are from South Australia and you add into that Amanda Rishworth and Mark Butler being in key portfolios as well, South Australia punches above its weight as part of my team. Uh, that's a good thing because you can be assured that the voices of South Australia are always heard and I urge South Australians take this opportunity uh, to urge uh, South Australians as well to make sure that the voice of the first Australians are heard, not just in the South Australian Parliament, but on the national stage as well. Thanks very much.
was the Prime Minister Anthony Albanese. Thanks very much for that. On that event coming to us live from Adelaide. You are with Newsday. I'm Ashley Gillen. It is now five past one Australian Eastern Daylight Time. We have been watching there this event that includes more than 150 influential business leaders who have all joined there with local and federal politicians at what is an invitation only luncheon. They are debating and discussing the state of South Australia's long term future. It is part of the News Corp Australia's Future series. It is an advocacy campaign that's been now running for two years. We are going to be hearing from uh, the Premier, Peter Malinowskis. He's now coming up to address the crowd. We'll listen in to that. Thanks, Pembo. I was about to have some duck. <laughs> well, um, good morning. Ladies and gentlemen, let me start by acknowledging, of course, a great Australian, Her Excellency, the Honourable Frances Addison AC. To you, Prime Minister, thank you for your address and your ongoing friendship. To my parliamentary colleagues, state and federal, to the Lord Mayor of Adelaide, Jane Lomax-Smith. Can I acknowledge Adrian Temple, the Chair of South Australia's Productivity, Productivity Commission, which is undertaking some important work at the moment to Michael Mill, Miller uh, from News Corp and also Gemma. Uh, Gemma, can I wholeheartedly thank you for putting on today's forum with such an extraordinary group of South Australians. Building a bigger, better South Australia is what we're all about in this room, regardless of your politics, regardless of your, your industry of choice and the ability to be able to discuss and discern different points of view. Sharing that common goal is something is that is genuinely valuable for which my government is grateful. Can I also acknowledge that we get together today on the lands of the Ghana people and pay my respect to their elders past, present and emerging in what is said to be an incredibly instructive and formative year for Indigenous affairs across our state and across our country. The, uh, the recent uh, introduction of legislation at the State Parliament to provide the first voice to any parliament around the country is something my government is incredibly committed towards and look forward to hopefully passing that legislation in the not too distant future. The voice to parliament, I think, is, a, is also a good example of a policy that the Prime Minister and I are in furious agreement on. But there are also differences between us, the most obvious being depth of experience and political longevity. There is wisdom that is only bequeathed by the many lessons of time. And I have always thought that there is much that can be learned from those with great experience. And so, Prime Minister, having been in office for a full 63 days longer than yourself, please know that I stand ready to provide sage counsel should you ever want to call upon it. But in all seriousness, I can't tell you how lucky I feel uh, to have been able to form government at the same time as Prime Minister Albanese, because I know that Alba and I share a common belief, a genuine conviction around the significance of the moment that we live in and the opportunities that it can provide. So much of our national industrial history and its political economy is defined by key moments critical points of decision that deliver a step change which sets the economy on a course that can truly define a people's standard of living and our way of life. You can pinpoint the moment that South Australia stepped up from being an almost entirely agricultural based economy to becoming the nation's pillar of manufacturing. When Holden's started rolling off the production lines at our giant suburban factories, the state changed. Suddenly, workers acquired new skills. Their work became more secure, better remunerated. That gave them the capacity to borrow and invest in their own homes. New technologies were invested in. Whole new supply chains emerged, bringing more skilled work and yet more opportunity. Adelaide grew dramatically in all directions, with suburbs stretching from Elizabeth to Norlunga, as working class families realised the dreams of home ownership and that the middle class was now accessible to them 
and essentially assured for their own children. And now we again face a critical point of decision, an opportunity to make the next step change to advance our economy and to improve the lives of another generation. As I have publicly stated in forums around the state, but never with you in the room, Prime Minister, the next decade is South Australia's big chance. I invite you to think about it this way. The two biggest challenges that exist globally of our age, the first being geopolitical insecurity, necessarily means that we will, as a Commonwealth, have to invest in more and more in defence, space and cyber. 